Now at 6.30 on WKYT This Morning, a police chase ends with an arrest in a Lexington shooting. Hundreds of people are honoring a UK student who police say was murdered near campus. And investigators are planning to make a major announcement about an ongoing case of stolen bourbon. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you from WKYT. It's so nice to have you along with us. Tuesday morning, it is April 21st. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. In today for Rebecca. A little chill in the air out there today, really? but there's no rain right now. <laughs> that's right. That's a good thing. And uh, we may have a shower or two later on today, it sounds like. But let's check in with Micah. Uh, we've had those pollen counts pretty high and uh, all sorts of issues in the weather. Yeah, and this is what you gave me just a few seconds ago. <laughs> Another cough drop. So yeah, he's trying to he's trying to stay away from me and Barb. He doesn't want us coughing on them anymore. All right, let's check outside and see what's going on. The pollen count is high. We need some rain to really wash some things out. Just give us a break from that. But unfortunately, when you eat a lot of that rain, you get the mold. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's one of those things you just got to go with the flow. 41 degrees in Lexington, 39 in Frankfort. That goes for Danville too, and work your way down 27 and 127. It is a chilly go at it this morning. Cynthia coming in 37. Degrees. Mainly during the evening is when we'll start to see uh, some of that rain move on in. 5 to 7 p.m., that's your best bet, and it slides on in and lasts throughout the night. So tomorrow morning, it's going to be a chilly start, but it will have some rain along with it. Now, I'll take you into the forecast. It gets much cooler than that 63. We're talking 50s tomorrow, 30s for overnight lows. How far do we go? Show you that coming up. All right, some interesting days ahead. Thank you. Let's get to the news. It's been a violent week in Lexington. Since Friday, there have been two murders and three separate shootings. One of those murders remains unsolved, but new this morning, police have made an arrest in a weekend shooting. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is live in downtown Lexington with the details of that. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning. 19 year old Kashawan Livers is facing a fleeing and evading charge after a wild chase yesterday near downtown Lexington. But that is not all he is charged with after officers found a gun in that car. Police say when they tried to pull Livers over, he took off at a high rate of speed in the East 6th Street area, nearly hitting several pedestrians as he lost control and at times drove on the sidewalk. Police say he eventually got out of the moving vehicle without putting it in park. His car then crashed into a home on Breckenridge Street as he ran away, but Livers did not get away for long as officers quickly caught up to him. Police say while searching the car, they found a gun and were later able to connect Livers to one of this weekend's shootings. Investigators say on Saturday, Livers fired several shots into a home near East 6th Street and Ohio, hitting one person in the arm. They say he also fired into a car, causing extensive damage. Now, in addition to that fleeing and evading charge, Livers is now also charged with assault, wanton endangerment, and criminal mischief. He will be arraigned on all of those charges this afternoon here at Fayette County District Court. For now, live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you so much. Today, we will hear from a family member of a Central Kentucky mother and daughter who were murdered. State police say Kathy and Samantha Netherland were found dead inside their Bardstown home. A year later, and no arrests have been made. Police are still looking for a black Chevy Impala seen on surveillance video driving away from the area shortly after the murders. Today, state police, along with the victim's daughter and sister, Holly, will talk about the case. Well, it's a story that's gained international headlines today. The Franklin County Sheriff says he'll make a major announcement about the investigation into stolen bourbon. WKYT's Victor Puente is at our live desk now to explain where the case stands now. Victor? Well, Franklin County Sheriff Pat Melton has previously said he thinks the heist was an inside job pulled off by at least two high ranking employees with access to Buffalo Trace's facilities. That's the distillery that manufactures Pappy Van Winkle. The rare bourbon went missing in October of 2013. It was valued at $20, $26,000. Sheriff Melton has said indictments in that case could be coming down soon. We're told he's received new tips and new information in the last month. A post on the Franklin County Sheriff Facebook page said a major announcement concerning the case will be made this afternoon. In March, the sheriff arrested Gilbert Kurtzinger and charged him with stealing wild turkey bourbon barrels. Kurt Singer worked for Buffalo Trace. We asked Melton if he thought Kurt Singer was connected to the theft. He would only say the case was still open. That press conference is scheduled for 1.30 at the Franklin County Sheriff's Office on Main Street in Frankfort. 
At the live desk, Victor Puente, WKYT. Victor, thank you. It was an emotional scene on the UK campus. Hundreds gathered to pay their respects to a student who was murdered during a robbery. 22 year old Jonathan Kruger was shot to death early Friday morning near campus. His co workers at the Kentucky Colonel organized last night's memorial. More than 200 people were there to share memories of Jonathan and to write letters about him to his family. To say that we are shocked and devastated only begins to express our feelings at this moment. He was everything to us, and imagining our lives without his smile is impossible. Kruger's funeral service is still being planned, but a celebration of his life is scheduled for May 31st. This morning, friends are remembering a mother who was killed in a crash in central Kentucky. We were reporting live from the scene of the yesterday's crash in U.S. 60 in Clark County near the Montgomery County line. Investigators say Tina Rapley died when a car hit her SUV while she was taking her daughter to school. The child has non-life-threatening injuries. Friends say Rapley was a breast cancer survivor and was involved in Relay for Life. She loved her community. She loved her family. Friends were important to her. She's just, um, she was just a great all-around person. She was funny. She would help those when they were down, um, if they needed it. It's just, a, it's a big loss for our community and her family. Police think the driver of the car that hit Rapley's SUV may have fallen asleep at the wheel and crossed the center line of the road. He was not hurt. A man has died in eastern Kentucky after crashing into a coal truck. That happened on Highway 15 in Breathitt County near the Perry County line. Witnesses told police that the coal truck stopped for a school bus. Police say the victim's car came around a curve and slammed into the back of the coal truck. The driver died at the scene. His name has not yet been released. Heavy rain is being blamed for causing a mudslide that's blocking a busy road in eastern Kentucky. Road crews in Floyd County say mud, rock, and other debris slid down onto US 23. They have not been able to clean up the mess because mud is still falling, and they're not sure how to stop it. Only one lane of US 23 is open this morning. Road crews are monitoring the situation, and they say they'll shut down the road again if it becomes too dangerous. A man is in jail accused of secretly recording video of a woman in a bathroom. Richmond police charged 22-year-old Jason Humphreys with video voyeurism. Police say he recorded the victim getting out of the shower by putting a camera under a bathroom door. Bowling Green police are searching for a missing teenager who they say could be in danger. 16-year-old Olivia Freeze was reported missing yesterday morning. Deputies say she was last seen wearing a black hoodie and black combat boots. She's a student at Greenwood High School. Investigators have not said why they think Olivia could be in danger. A Central Kentucky School Board is seeking state approval to fire the superintendent there. The Montgomery County Board of Education voted unanimously this month to remove Joshua Powell. The Herald Leader reports this morning that a Lexington law firm hired by the board found that Powell violated state law when he hired his wife. State law says the education commissioner must approve any removal of a superintendent. Kentucky's four Republican candidates for governor will meet on statewide television one week before the May 19th primary. KET's Kentucky Tonight program will host the four Republican candidates for governor on May 11th for what could be the only statewide televised debate before the primary. And the CN2, Getting by close. the way, will do the cable channel will do a, a forum with them uh, this evening. So, so an uh, opportunity yeah. for people to uh, see the candidates right. in action there. And we're interviewing them on Kentucky Newsmakers. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we cover this campaign. It's interesting, a four way race. Oh, yes. And we want to check now and see how traffic's moving this morning. Here's Officer Don with a check on live drive traffic bright and early at 640. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Turns out that's a stalled car on the exit ramp from I 75 northbound onto North Broadway. Uh, so it shouldn't be a major issue taking the ramp, just to make you aware of that. Now, the interstate itself looks good, and we checked uh, getting off there at Winchester Road. No issues to report. Uh, same situation at, uh, at uh, way down at Newtown Pike with no major issues as well. Getting a quick look at Broadway and High Street, where traffic's moving great, both in and outbound this morning. On our Waze map, some live drivers on the way in, and not reporting any, any problems at all. Inbound Nicholasville Road at the moment looks good, and so does Harrodsburg Road, past New Circle, down toward Lane Allen. Now back to you in the studio.
Don, thank you very much, and keep us informed as we head toward the morning rush hour. Good to have you on WKYT here on this Tuesday morning. A lot more news is on the way. Some vacationers are taking a taco for the road. <laughs> Why some folks are leaving the North Carolina hotel with a heavier suitcase. And it's all about the temperatures the next few days. Even though some showers will, will return, we're still looking at very chilly temperatures. Look at that, already showing up 30s this morning. I'll show you how low we go because we even get colder than that. Coming up next.